So some of you are aware, recently we had quite a bit of wind come through. We had sort of 60 to 80 knots come through and um, smash a few things around. I thought that I only lost the solar panel. Um, turns out I lost all of my internet uh, aerial and everything as well. Um, and I found that out a couple of days later when I was walking along the yard and I happened to notice an aerial on the ground that looks suspiciously like ours. So um, I basically have bugger all internet at the moment so I need to figure out how to solve that. So um, I've gone into town and I've bought um, uh, a whole bunch of gear for basically setting up a 4G um, long range internet system on a boat. Um, so this is Australia specific, um, but the learnings pretty much will apply around the world. So I'll show you what I've done, the gear I've got, I'll put a list of all of the different types of gear that I'm using, um, and then I'll also put on my specific numbers, so any of you internet freaks out there, you can actually see how good the reception is that I, um, I managed to get. So I'll go into it now and we'll, uh, we'll get started. <music> So the aerial that I've got is this little little beast here. So it's not massively long, it's only maybe, I don't know, half a metre long, something like that. Um, I got that from a place in Australia called JCAR, um, but I'm assuming there's equivalent sort of electrical type stores all around the world. Um, this is a seven decibel unit, um, and it comes with, I don't know, three or five metres of cable that hangs at the bottom. So I'll just show you the bottom that it's, it's pretty, you can't really connections into it and all that sort of stuff it's all one unit which I'm actually quite happy with because it means that it can't really be broken too easily um, comes on a big spring mount so it's sort of flexible uh, it's only a seven decibel unit and the reason I've, I've kept it at a relative so the higher the decibel so so 14 decibels is sort of twice as I suppose long range if you will than a say a seven decibel I know this is probably going to be wrong if somebody knows the specifics but the easiest way to think about it is a short, say two, three decibel, etc. Um, aerial is quite small. It's what you have on your normal routers when you buy them, and that does like local um, computers really, really well. But it doesn't have long distance. So when you go to something higher, like seven, nine, um, fifteen decibel, something like that, you get further and further away from the towers. You know, before your reception starts to die. The trouble is that it works in a cone. So, so looking end on, it, imagine a big donut around this. That's how it, it sees the signal, so it can see it from any direction. However, when it's like when it's sitting in its normal position, vertical, it works in a cone, like up and down. So a three decibel would have a, a very big, steep cone, but it wouldn't go out very far. Whereas a like a 14, 15, 16, etc. decibel would have a very narrow cone, um, but it would go out, you know, kilometres. It goes out a long, long way. The trouble is that when it's on a boat and the aerial's doing this, that cone's also doing that. So it's going in and out of reception from the cell phone tower. So that's why I've kept with a fairly small decibel. So seven decibel is pretty much the maximum that I really want to go to. Um, I'm happy with 20 kilometers of range. Once I'm 20 k's offshore, I'm going to be on satellite internet anyway. Um, so you know this is this is good enough for what I'm trying to do. So let's get into it, and uh, I'll show you this getting mounted onto the aerial. So in order to basically drill a hole and mount this, so so. The steel mount that it's going to go on sits on this thread and then these washers and nut etc go on and basically nip that up tight so it sits flush against that surface there. So in order to basically get the best possible fit, um, I'll just show you this, so it's it's just under 16mm so this is about 15, roughly 15.5mm so I'll cut a 16mm hole and that'll be spot on. Now this um, hole saw is what I'm going to be using, it kind of looks like it's too small visually um, but when you measure the teeth, it's a fraction over 16 and that's going to cut bigger So these hole saws always sort of wobble around a bit when you cut them like that So that'll probably cut about 16 and a half or so so there'll be heaps of clearance when this is finished um, I would have probably liked it to be a slightly smaller hole saw, but that is the smallest one that I've got in my set So um, half mil clearance will be fine. Uh, we'll easily be able to deal with that. We'll fill it up with paint. Won't be an issue So let's get this up on the roof this is our temporary um, mast that we use for our Wi-Fi and, and that sort of thing. So I'm on top of the wheelhouse. Um, this thing probably stands about I don't know, two and a half metres tall. It's, that's it there with the ladder gone. Um, it's just a couple of 50 by 25 pieces of box that I knocked up with a platform on top so I can get an aerial up high for now while we're in the yard. Um, as soon as I start making the radar mast, this is all going to come off. So I've 
just gonna get this hole in and let's get this area done. So this is right at the bottom of the mast, so you can see there's the aerial mount just there. And then probably six inches away. This is the old cable for the old Wi-Fi aerial that we had. Um, and it just goes in a small hole up here. Um, again, it's all slapped together, this is all pretty rough. This is just a basically temporary mast. So what I've got to do is get the cable, the new one to go down with the old one. So that's the old fitting there, that's the old cable from the old aerial. And that one is the new cable there with a, an adapter on. Basically I can join those two together now. So I'll do it one handed, two and a half metres up a ladder. So I don't know if you can see that. My hand's in the way, that's probably right. So those two there will go together. I'll do it when I've got both hands. Um, I'll join them up and then I'll basically just pull the cable from the inside all the way down. And uh, yeah, we should be able to get that right the way through. So that's the cable all in. So this is the new, new aerial, new cable. And because this is all temporary, I haven't got any proper fittings to stop this chafing. So I've wrapped up uh, probably about 30 centimeters of tape, heaps and heaps of, uh, of cloth um, duct tape, just to um, give it you know, plenty of wear resistance and all that, because I don't want to damage this, um, this cable, obviously, because we're going to use that when we set up our proper radar mast. So that there now follows that beam all the way down. Uh, this is the top of the wheelhouse that I'm on now. So that basically just goes straight through and into the wheelhouse. There's a hole in the middle of that beam through the steel. So I'll show you what that's like on the underside and let's get it hooked up to the modem and see how good our signal is. So this is the modem that we use. Um, it's a little Optus unit. A little, I don't know how you say it. Huey or however that one is. Basically this is the little two decibel aerial, little wee tiny wee thing, paddle thing. Normally has one on this side as well. Um, in fact, actually, sorry, tell a lie. When I first got this modem, it didn't have any aerials. It had a panel over the back here. And I Googled, um, before I bought this, I Googled do they actually have external aerials, which is incredibly important. You have to find a modem that has an external aerial, or at least these sort of little flappy type aerials coming out the back of them. These are external aerials. So I found out that yes, it does, it has this panel at the back. So I ripped that off when I got it. Um, I found out, because one will be in and one will be out. So this little aerial here, sends the signal around the boat. So that's when you come on board and you, you start your computer up and you find the brew peg network, it's coming from this aerial. The Optus signal from the from the you know the, the tower wherever that may be located and from the aerial we've just put up on the top there comes in on this side. So it, I figured out which one was which by basically plugging in a big aerial on one side and a small aerial on the other and playing around until I actually got good reception um, from the from the tower. So that's pretty simple. I'll show you how to do all that in a sec. Um, it has a whole bunch of features like telephone, I can hook in VoIP and put printers and all sorts of stuff into this. I haven't used any of that, I pretty much just use it as a Wi-Fi modem. Um, we do share files um, around the boat, so from one computer to the next using this. It's pretty cool and it's pretty fast. Um, I think at one point, they, I could be wrong on this, but I think they clock something like 300 megabytes a second or something, something insanely fast. So it's a pretty cool modem, does some cool stuff. Um, so that's, that's where we're going to be hooking in our aerial that we've just fitted. So let's get that all up and uh, yeah, test our speeds. So as part of connecting these modems, either. so if you have a look at that fitting there, you can see it's what's called an SME fitting, as in um, Sierra Michael Alpha, or sorry, Sierra Michael Echo. Um, basically it has a pin, I'll show you the equivalent N. So you can see that, so there's a male female type arrangement, it has a, a pin that goes in the center, goes from this one into this one here. The, area, the cable for the aerial is not, it's, I think this is an, what they call an FME, um, so it's completely different, so obviously it's not going to work. So you can buy these little adapters, um, and they're only a couple of dollars, I think, I think this one actually came with the aerial. Um, but basically it allows you to convert from one type to the other, um, and then you can plug it directly into your modem. So when you, if, if you've never done this before, it's really easy, like, like at the shops that, have, that sell the aerials, they'll also generally sell these connectors. Um, so you can get them, just take your modem in if you really need to, and um, you'll be able to get all the fittings to be able to connect it up. So yeah, if you've never tried it before, give it a go. It's really quite simple, and it's um, kind of all just bolt together parts, and most of the shops are able to, um, to help you if they've got a decent selection of um, electrical parts. So that's my modem installed for now, to see if it's actually going to work before we go and build anything. Um, it's installed on a custom mount. Uh, some people would say that that's a box. It's not. It's a custom modem mount. Um, so yeah, let's get this um, up and running. I've got it firing up. It'll take a couple of oh, 30 seconds or something, and then we'll check our speed now. So these are the numbers that we're getting straight after it's all set up and everything. So you can see down here, you've got the RSRP at negative 103 decibels. 
um, not sure if you can see that in the screen. Um, and then you've got the SINR at 14 decibels. So the other two that I really want to focus on. So the closer you can get RSRP to zero, the better. And the higher you can get the SINR, um, the better. So, ba so basically what this means is RSRP is how much signal I'm receiving. So the, the, the um, closer that it is to zero means I'm receiving more and more signal. And the higher this is means that the signal, this is a measure of signal quality. So um, it's, it's basically signal interference noise ratio, I think it stands for. Um, but essentially the, the higher that number, the cleaner the signal. So just to give you an idea, these are the measurements that are often sort of used. These are all over the internet if you want to get it. So we were at 103, so ours is at the, the high end of what they would call good internet. And our noise ratio, they don't really have any um, numbers on that generally, but basically, yeah, the higher the noise ratio, the, the better. So I'm just gonna flick up here and I'll show you. So this is, this is just YouTube, I'm just gonna randomly pick a video. Um, so you can sort of see it's loading up pretty fast. Um, I've identified 36 patterns. Cool, so there you go. So straight away it's, it's getting stuck into videos and playing those up. Actually, coincidentally, what I want to do is talk to you guys also about um, SV Seeker. So I'll just, um, if you haven't seen this uh, this channel, definitely check it out. So I'll talk to you a little bit more about that um, at the end of the video. Um, but it's an awesome, awesome channel. If you like our stuff, you're going to love Seeker. So if you're trying to set up 4G internet on your boat, um, the best thing that I can suggest is get a good modem. Um, so D-Link, um, Huey, or however you say that name. Um, those two are pretty good. I've used both of them and had good results. Um, definitely the, the D-Link wasn't as good as the Huey, or however you, again, how you say that name. Um, but one of the key things to do is look for an external aerial. So don't get one of the little USB dongles. If you want decent internet, don't get a little USB dongle because they're okay, they're fine for temporary stuff, but they're not real great. If you want to set up a good network on your boat, just get a decent modem. You'll probably have to spend maybe a couple of hundred bucks on a good one. Um, but if it has external uh, inputs and outputs, so it'll be basically the two little aerials, look for that. Um, and then get yourself a decent aerial to put at the top of your mast or as high as you can on your wheelhouse. Um, and then run the cable. Now when you get the cable, make sure you get the big fat stuff so you can see how sort of thick that cable is. So it has the connectors that you need at the end. So, so these are available, these sort of cables are available in like sort of three, five, ten meter lengths. Probably don't want to go over ten meters because you start to get quite a lot of signal loss um, at that point. Um, but yeah, if you're, if you're able to stay under ten meters or if you're on a yacht, the height is probably going to compensate a little bit. Um, so yeah, put it on your spreaders maybe, or if you if you really want to, go to the top of your mast. Um, but most yachts are going to have a mast taller than 10 meters. Um, so get that, get get good cable, get a decent modem. Um, make sure you've got nice um, gold-plated connections. They're not that expensive. In Australia, they're maybe six dollars per connection. So they're not you know you need two or three of them. They're not they're not real pricey or anything. Um, connect it all up, and then uh, yeah, get your modem and um, see if you can get internet. And then check those numbers. So so Google. Uh, go into your settings. So normally on your modem, you can you can put the IP address of the modem into your browser. So open Internet Explorer or Chrome, um, Mozilla, whatever you use. Um, and then normally your modem will have an IP address that you can go to. So it might be like 192.168.1.1 or something like that. Um, go into that, and then it'll give you a password. You can put that in and and go into your settings. Have a look. Um, if you can find those um, those numbers that I was telling you about, the, the negative decibels and the positive decibels for the different uh, the different um, settings that I was talking about, and then play around with it, put your aerial in different places before you mount it permanently, and see if you can improve those numbers. And that's all there is, literally, to getting a decent Wi-Fi set up on a boat. Um, we've been doing this for about four years now, and uh, yeah, it works really great. So, SV Seeker. Um, when I first started building Brewpeg, uh, about two years ago or so, I needed to get a sandblaster, so I jumped onto YouTube like I do with most things to see if I could figure out how to do it. Um, and I googled wet water blast sandblasting, um, and up came um, SV Seeker, Doug's channel. Um, it is the coolest channel. If you like our videos, you're gonna absolutely love Seeker. It's so cool. He does everything. He's building uh, a 74 foot junk boat. He's built it from nothing, so this, this is, a massive boat built in a guy's backyard, I love it. He's built everything, cranes, hydraulics, he's got an old bus engine, he's stuck that in, he's, he cast his own propeller for God's sake. Um, he's, uh, he's a smart guy, he built a, like a CNC table, he's got a lathe and all sorts of stuff. It's, it's an amateurs channel, like it's completely set up by amateurs, um, but there's volunteers that come in from all over the world and, uh, and help put this boat together for him. 
and uh, when it's all done it's going to be a bit of a research boat from what I understand so um, yeah definitely check it out the link is in the uh, description below um, if you as I say if you like our videos you're going to love Doug's channel cheers